for tonight. Father, whoever is in this room tonight, would you be softening their hearts this very moment, stirring in them whatever it is they need to receive from you tonight, Lord. Father God, may our worship be pure and holy and pleasing like incense up into the throne room tonight, Lord. Let this not be an event or entertainment, but let it be pure and real and genuine and authentic. Lord, cause us to fall on our knees and bow our heads before you tonight, Lord God. Recognizing you as king, king, king over our life, king over our family, king over this world. Jesus, you are king. God, I ask that you would cause each person in this room tonight to wake up to come alive, to hunger, to thirst, to want to know you more than they ever have. Lord, already be working. I pray you were working in them before they even walked through this door tonight, God. Cause them to move, to use their voice, to worship you tonight. Jesus, we love you. We adore you. We adore you. Holy Spirit, fall upon this room tonight. We are the upper room tonight. We are the upper room tonight. We are your saints. And we worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We praise you. And we give you all glory and honor. Everybody, do not stay in your chairs tonight. The altars are open. Come forward. Have a seat. Bow your head. Be vulnerable. Do not be afraid. Encounter Jesus tonight. Let him come into you and be through you. Don't let this be entertainment or an event. Experience him tonight. Will you do that? Will you join me in that? We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Let us worship with everything we have tonight. In your holy and beautiful name, I pray. Amen.
Thank you. 
How many of us know that it is the breath of God that is keeping us safe? Yeah. I'm a very shy person. Oh 
I'm sitting in my dad's living room in Ohio, worshiping, as we always do when we visit. And the Lord asked me, when was the last time you fell? When was the last time you were tempted where you were struggling not to fall? And my answer shocked me. Not since November 1st, almost two months. Not one struggle or failure. And it's like Christ delivered me. And I, I, I felt like I heard him say, I did this in you. I reached in and killed this addiction and I removed the darkness. He said, I healed you while you slept. Somehow he did this amazing deliverance while I slept almost two months earlier. He ripped the darkness right out of me completely. You know how I said I felt like I was gonna die. That was the mercy killing. He killed that thing in me that I couldn't kill. It just wasn't what I expected. Uh, and I just wanna say it didn't happen in an amazing worship service. It didn't happen because some man of God put his hand on my head and said come out or any other kind of crazy thing. It happened one on one. And some of you need to hear that. All those things are good, but he wants to know you personally. He wants to do the whole thing with you. At first, I couldn't understand how such a dramatic thing could happen and I not be aware. But due to my depression still being so severe, it took me two months uh, before I realized even he had to tell me then. And I felt like he said it was how low and depressed I was. He showed me that if he had lifted the depression first, I wouldn't know if I'd been delivered. Because anyone who knows about addiction knows you have triggers. And depression is a massive trigger, right? So if you're still crazy depressed and you're not acting out, something changed. Something changed. Um, and so the Lord spared my life. He spared my family. A horrible loss. And you have to understand, I didn't change anything I was doing. I didn't do one thing better. He just healed me out of his love and his mercy. I did not deserve... Please hear this. I did not deserve this healing. I don't deserve this freedom, his peace. But Jesus is amazing. Amen. For the next seven plus years after that, I didn't have one struggle, one failure. And actually, when those things that used to be triggers would happen, instead of feeling tempted, I would feel a light sadness, like a grief over past failures, not guilt, just grief. And it would quickly be followed by feelings of thankfulness and being overwhelmed by the mercy I was shown. For any addict to not even struggle is almost unheard of. But that's how Jesus does things. He does things complete. He doesn't do it the way the world does. He didn't give me what the world would give me. He gave me himself. The Lord did tell me I had one true role. My job was simply to never give up. That every time I did give up and fail, to get back up and walk again. He said, don't give up. Don't ever give up. Even if you're on the ground and you can't get up, look up. Trust me, I had a lot of those days. He's faithful and his timing is always perfect. After 20 years, <laughs> any time was a great time for me. Um, my biggest encouragement to any of you who are in the waiting, you're in that place still. He will not waste one minute of your suffering or your struggle. He redeems it all. Where my life has gone since then and where it is now is crazy. If you told me what's going on now in 2014, I, I wouldn't believe you. I had no idea the Lord had these plans for me. But I see now that he used all the time, all the suffering, all the struggle to forge things in me that I would not have if it were not for that season of my life. And what a bonus that I get to stand in front of you all and share the goodness of the Lord. And any of you who are in this same place, you get to hear hope that's real. Not something from way back and someone you've never met. I'm standing here right now because of who he is. When we say the gospel is the good news, that's what I'm talking about. This is the good news. This is the good news. He says, come and be with me. And I'll tell you, I remember leading a group once and, and these guys were like, I just want to get free from all my addictions. And it was the craziest word I felt like the Lord ever gave me. He said, ask them, will you still follow me if I don't set you free? Yeah, that's what they did. And that's what I did as I said it, like, oh, I don't want to say this. This is sobering. He goes, I want you to love me more than you love being pure or free. Those things are of the Lord, but do you love him more? Enough more that no matter what, he's, he's what you're going after. So that is from my life. That's from my heart. 
Uh, I guess one of the things the Lord showed me was um, years earlier I'd had a major back injury for about four years. And eventually the Lord, through a lot of circumstances, brought healing. But before he did, he taught me how to maintain that healing. He taught me all these things with strengthening my core, with posture, and 20 other things that took me a year to learn. And it's like the Lord said, in the same way that when your back was healed, you learn the things to maintain it. You have to learn the things to maintain your freedom when he gives it to you. Because you can lose what he gave you if you don't value it, if you don't treasure it. If you don't treasure the good news of what he's done in your life and protect it, if you don't stay away from the place that you know is too familiar, it doesn't matter if he healed you, you still don't go running back and say, yeah, I get to play in the mud because I'm healed. No, you do the opposite. You show the Lord that you value what he did. You look in the mirror and you show yourself that you value what he gave you. And so can I just, I'm not sure where we're going through, but can I just speak a blessing? over you all um, and if any of this is speaking to you personally where you're at my encouragement is just let yourself be a little bit raw right now and a little bit vulnerable because uh, the Holy Spirit is moving in this place so you're safe this is a great place to be there Lord I ask right now Holy Spirit would you breathe hope in this room where there's been none where there has been the feeling the guttural feeling of death would you breathe life Lord, when people have had this self-conversation, I'll never, I'll never, I'll never. God, would you break that right now in Jesus' name? Would you break the even the brain patterns, the cycles that keep going around and around? Holy Spirit, would you reach in and do recreative miracles in hearts and minds tonight? Holy Spirit, have your way. But there's none like you. There's none like you. This is not a story that's possible other than you, Jesus. And I thank you, God, that you want so many more to know the goodness and the freedom you have for them so that they can love well and receive love well, that they can walk in your goodness all the days of their life, that they can walk around like light everywhere they go and people are seeing Jesus and Jesus because the hindrances are gone. God, remove those things. Remove those blocks in our hearts, God, in our minds. Remove those things that hinder you moving in everyday life. You are qualified.
glory of the King. And if you're doubting in your mind right now, if you've tasted the glory, I will tell you what it looks like. Jesus, in my mouth, every 
our children of God, would you worship tonight? Would you be who you were created to be? Would you not be satisfied with anything less? Anything less. 14 years ago, I fell to my knees and I said, God, if you get me out of here, I'll be back at church on Sunday. And if you redeem my life and my marriage, I'll spend the rest of my life telling people about it. And that's exactly what he did. person I was then. I have taken every single day and picked up my cross. Refusing to go back to what I was. Refusing. I am not content with what this world has to offer me. There is nothing. There is nothing. So if you're seeking for it, if you're grabbing for it, it will never fill you. It will never fill you. Only He can fill you. Only He can redeem what has been broken. People told us we were through. We should quit. We should give up. We've done too much damage. And I'm here to tell you there's more hope. There's more hope than what the world has to offer. If I had this thing, I would not have my children right there. My husband right there. Do not listen to those lies. There is a hope that is greater than anything you can imagine. Anything. Would you choose it? Would you choose it? Would you choose him? Do not be content. Romans 13 says, Besides this, knowing the time, it is already the hour for you to wake up from sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Is your salvation nearer than when you first believed? Or are you dry? Are you asleep? The night is nearly over, and the daylight is near, so let us discard the deeds of darkness and put on the, the armor of light. Will you put on the armor of light? Will you be the generation that rises up? Will you rise? Will you wake up? Will you join me? Will you join us? Will you wake up recognizing what has been given to you? The salvation, the gifts. It is the only gift that matters. If you do not understand what he did for you on that cross, would you ask him to show you? I believe, I truly believe this, that the only way to fully be transformed is to fully understand the gift. Do you know what he did? Do you treasure it in your heart? Is it in your bones? Is it in your spirit? Do you hunger for him? Or do you leave? Will you leave tonight? And will you go back to the same old thing? Living your life in your four walls, making money, paying bills, being content in your four corners, but never truly content, you know what I'm talking about. It's never enough. It will never be enough. I'm telling you right now that our King, He needs you to wake up. He needs you to not be content with worldly things. Your relationships cannot be your savior. Neither can your career or your children or your spouse. There is only one savior. Is he on the throne of your life? Because if he's not, you're out there half dead. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. Do you believe? Do you? What is it the desire of your heart? What is it? Check your spirit now. Clean your house now. He 
you are a temple and the Holy Spirit wants to reside in you. He wants to pour out of you. He wants you to be a light. But are you dim? Are you tired? Are you asleep? I beg of you, I plead with you. The world needs to know the hope, but they won't know it through you if you are dim, if you are tired. you recognize what he's done for you. Do not be content. Brothers and sisters, every day I wake up, I am incredibly grateful. I wake up and I thank the Lord. And you know what he tells me? Actually, you know what he just told me at the altar a few minutes ago? I was just laughing and crying and just thinking, I can't believe this is my life. I can't believe what you've done with my life. And he said, I'm just getting started. This is only the beginning. And you know what? That word's not just for me, it's for you. He's just getting started. Will you hang on a little bit longer? Will you run with him? Will you be wild and free with him? The greatest adventure of your entire life will only be found in him. You can visit Rome, you can go to Singapore, you can go to all the national parks in this beautiful country. You will never be complete in them. You are only complete in Him. And He wants to take you on a journey that only exists in His name. Will you join me? Will you join us? So I'll tell you what. That man, but all of them, we're all hungry. We're all hungry. Aren't you hungry, Benson? I want more. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Then stand up and be who you were called to be, who you were created to be. If you've turned away, if you've walked away, please, please come back. Be the prodigal that comes He's waiting for you. Join us. Link arm in arm with us. There's a world out there that needs to know you. It needs to know your story. It needs to know the hope that you've been given. We need co-workers, co-laborers. Will you join us? Join us. All right. Stand up. Let's worship. Be who you were called to be. Oh, 
is come and have your way from all that we see or
or the chains in their lives will be broken tonight. As I join my faith with your faith and your faith with my faith. Are we ready? Are we ready? For chains, fear, back, Jesus, you change everything. Lives healed, hope found here and now. Jesus, you change everything.
Yeah. 